Okay, uh, YouTubers, uh, today I'm going to show you how I do a uh, film transfer to a uh, digital, uh, I believe you call it telesigning. And uh, I will show you what I did to modify my projector here, which is the Ike SNT Zero Slimline projector. Now, I have two projectors. This iKey is the 16mm uh, projector and the other one I have is the UMIG 8mm uh, and Super 8 combination uh, projector. But I will show you how I did it with this 16mm uh, which you can also do with another projector for 8mm and Super 8. Okay, one of the things that you need to replace in these old projectors is the, uh, the light bulb that they use. It's a high intensity light bulb and they put out a lot of heat. And this model has this bell looking light bulb. Okay, if you got one of these on your projector, you're in luck. Because some old projectors, they use the old, that look like vacuum tube light bulbs and, uh, you know, to to replace them with a, an LED it's kind of kind of hard but these are a lot easier to replace for an LED light bulb now the LED light bulb that I recommend is this one right here and uh, I'll post a link of where to get this uh, some people use just a single LED and I try that but the problem I was having it creates a hot spot and uh, this one, as far as I'm concerned, it gets rid of those hot spots and uh, it spreads the light out more evenly. So what you do is you just slap it on there. And you're ready to go for the next step. Okay, so the next step you need to do is to uh, uh, try to diffuse the uh, the light coming out of this LED. And one of the things that I purchased is this. Let's uh, get right here. It's a uh, it's a lens. It's a frosty uh, coated lens that uh, can diffuse uh, the light coming out of these uh, LEDs. Uh, I tried it, but unfortunately, uh, it was was kind of way too uh, bright, and it wasn't diffusing it good enough for me. But you don't have to get this. Uh, what you can do is you can slap a piece of paper in front of this, and uh, that's good enough to diffuse the light. But I decided to put this on, and then put the paper in front of it which did a good job as far as diffusing the light evenly okay as you can see I pretty much uh, super glue that uh, lens diffuser onto the uh, bracket to hold it in place now you don't really have to get this but since I already purchased this I, I tried it and uh, it was okay but uh, it was way too bright but what I found out that if you use a piece of paper which I'm going to show you right here okay another method you can use instead of the uh, the frosty lens is uh, you put a piece of paper in front of the uh, light bulb that way it'll diffuse the light evenly and since I already got this I decided to just leave it there and it wasn't doing too much of a good job that I expected it to do but I decided to leave it there and put a uh, piece of paper in front of it Okay, all you got to do is make sure that it's secured in there.
because there's this blade in here that may act, act like a fan and get caught if it's not secured in properly. Okay, so now I kind of fixed it up a little better so the uh, paper is flush onto the uh, frosty lens. And the next thing you need to do is to pop the lens off of this thing because this is where you're going to be recording straight right out of the film gate. Okay, so now that you the lens is removed from the projector, uh, the next thing to do is a uh, use a uh, camcorder to record directly into the film gate. Now this camcorder I have is the uh, Sony uh, FDR-AX100. The good thing about this, the like about this, is that I can adjust the uh, aperture setting, the gain, and the shutter speed. That would uh, greatly remove that flickering that a lot of people get when they record uh, right off the, the film gate. Now you just can't record using this lens here because it's it's not designed to uh, get in focus with the small film gate in there so what needs to be done is you need a macro lens just like this one here uh, this one is the uh, high definition converter which I will show you uh, where to get it and uh, comes out just like this uh, let's see what we get here um, also when you get this is you'll get this adapter universal adapter now this adapter will fit the uh, the lens if you have a lens that is 52 millimeter all the way to 67 millimeter uh, this lens that I got here has a 62 millimeter and that would fit perfectly onto that so what you need to do is with this adapter, you take this macro lens, you screw it on there, like so. And you take these two things in here, so you kind of squeeze it, and then you just pop it right in there. And there you go. Now you have a macro lens that you can zoom in into the film gate. Okay, now uh, one of the things that these old 16 millimeter projectors or some projectors is they don't have a speed control. And that's very important to also get rid of the flickering that you will get out of these projectors. Um, I suggest you get one of these uh, voltage, AC voltage regulators and this is how you, you hook things up is that you get yourself a, uh, an extension cord just like this and you cut it in half and one end of it you will connect it to the uh, uh, let's see this is the input side and the input side is actually the uh, goes to this here which is goes to the uh, power source and the output goes to the uh, part where you will take your projector plug and plug it in there and the first thing you do is make sure you crank it all the way up that way you will when you apply power to it you got enough juice to kick start your uh, projector and once you start seeing those flickering you can just adjust the uh, the voltage to lower the voltage down or the current that way your projector will slow down and that way you would lose the flickering all right now I have a uh, 600 foot 16 millimeter film all hooked up ready to go before you start recording you make sure that you remove this uh, I don't know what you call it, it holds the uh, film into the film gate. Remove it and if you're uh, 
projector has something similar to this uh, it's best to clean it out first before you start recording because there's a lot of you know, dust bunnies and, and hair or all that kind of stuff that gets caught in there and you end up recording it so it's best to clean this part out first before you start recording okay now you take the uh, the cord from the projector going in to the voltage controller to your power supply I got this thing cranked all the way fully clockwise and that way you'll have the proper voltage going into the projector to kickstart it okay so now that I have the projector running I ran the film through and got the first frame and I froze it uh, to stop the, uh, the frame or the film rolling and uh, what needs to be done now is to uh, zoom in on that little film gate right there which barely see it but uh, to do so is you uh, move this tray forward or back that way you can get it in focus and uh, push this to zoom in and zoom out and uh, make sure that the uh, you don't have it in autofocus you have it in manual because you know on the film there's some underexposed, overexposed and the camera will get confused and, and focusing so the first thing you do is you run it through stop the film in one frame and you start focusing and I'll show you how to do that okay I got this remote monitor here and I'll show you uh, how to focus the, uh, the film gate I'm gonna move the uh, camera a little forward until I see that film gate right there then I'm going to zoom in on that film gate do a little bit more adjustment push it forward now it's going to be upside down because the, the lens that uh, was there originally it's turns it right side up but uh, I don't think you can see it on my camera but I can see it on the monitor it's clear fairly clear and once I get in to that what I like then I can start adjusting my uh, aperture settings here I can do it manually and I can adjust it as you can see it's starting to get dark and it gets kind of bright I usually set it at 4.0 aperture the best I can do and I can switch it to the gain adjustment to make it brighter or darker and in this case it's like minus three decibels and of course my shutter speed I keep it at 30 frames per second I'm, I am recording at uh, 30 frames per second anyway so that's what I usually like doing so once everything is all set you just turn on the uh, your, your camcorder, start recording, and turn on your projector. Oops, went the wrong way. Okay, there we go. Now, as you can see, there is a slight flickering that's when your voltage controller you need to start turning until that flicker disappear and I'll show you that right now I want to turn it down until the flicker until the flicker disappears kind of out of focus but uh, there you have it if you can control the voltage going into your projector you can get rid of that flickering that it's a common problem and I'll show you some samples of this video